So, paraphernalia is defined as being miscellaneous articles, um, especially equipment needed for a particular activity. Needed being the important word there. Now, what am I on about? <laughs> what am I talking about? Now, I kind of view this as kind of a concept, so stick with me. Um, in this video, I want to talk all about gear really. I never talk about gear on this channel and I want to kind of talk about my approach to gear and I want it to revolve a little bit around this, the, the Canon M50 which I've had now for about four months. Um, so what do I mean when I'm talking about paraphernalia? For me, it's very much a concept that allows me to keep my gear at a certain level, so to speak. So it's just paraphernalia, you know, it's just my camera gear, it's not a big deal. It almost you know, uh, makes it all seem quite insignificant. Um, it's, it stops me from putting it all up on a pedestal. Now don't get me wrong, you know, I have a lot of respect for my gear, and I love the gear that I own, and I'm really grateful to have it. Um, the, the camera that's currently filming this video is my wonderful Nikon D7200, which is my stills camera. And I know most people, a lot of people, would say, you know, it's not a, a, an amazing camera, it's not a, a top camera. Um, to me, it's incredible, and it does, everything that I want from it and more. Which kind of brings me on to my next point, which is this huge cliche of, of your camera, or even your gear in many ways, you know, it's just a tool, it's a tool. Which, in my opinion, is, is, is really, really true, you know, and it's a cliche for a reason. Um, so what does it mean when people say that? Now, I play guitar as well, and for me, I really like to use it as an analogy, so, you know, if I just play on a cheap acoustic guitar and I'm strumming away and I think, oh, you know what, I'm gonna go out and get a, a, a better guitar. And I go out and I spend like four grand on a new guitar, then I get home. It doesn't then mean that I'm a better guitarist, all right? You know, if I get a new guitar, it might be, it might sound nicer, it might be nicer to play, um, it might be easier to play, it might look better, but it doesn't affect my skill as a guitarist in the slightest, not in one bit, and that's exactly the same concept with your camera and actually all your camera gear as well. You know, it might make your job easier or quicker, it might make you more efficient as a photographer, but it doesn't make you a better photographer. Which kind of brings me then on to this, this inevitable question of, all right, so why would you go out and spend nearly 500 quid on this new camera if it's just a tool? <laughs> so it makes me sound like I'm being a hypocrite. Um, but that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in this video. What is my approach to gear? How do I justify a gear purchase? And how do I sort of look on gear? What's, what's, uh, what's my opinion on gear in general? Um, and that's why I really wanted to talk about this. Mint little camera. Now, if you're watching this video because you're perhaps interested in buying the Canon M50, I think it's really important to note that I'm really only talking about this in a videography sense. I use this camera to film my YouTube videos. Obviously I'm not doing it right now, but generally I use it for my vlogs. So I don't use it as a stills camera. I use it occasionally on my one-to-one -one workshops as a stills camera, but I don't feel like I have enough, enough experience um, to really give too much of an opinion um, on this camera as a, stills, as a stills camera. So please understand it's pretty much just videography. But yeah, why would I go out and spend 500 quid on this if I'm saying it's just a tool? And that's where my reasoning comes in for, for buying gear. And for me, well, there's a couple of things really. Firstly, because I do this full time, you know, it's how I make my living. There has to be some sort of business justification. So if I spend 500 quid on this, you know, naturally then I have to think, am I really gonna get that 500 quid back just because I buy, you know, a new camera? Probably not, because like I said, it isn't gonna make me a better photographer. But that brings me on to the second reason. And this is all about the only way I could probably describe it is, is faff saving or, or time saving. So to buy a new camera will save me a hell of a lot of time. It'll make, um, it'll, it'll make my videography process a hell of a lot quicker and hopefully a lot more efficient as well. And in purchasing this Canon M50, it's definitely been the case. So I wanted to talk about a few features that have really, really helped me um, with the Canon M50 and what really, um, justified me making this purchase in the first place. Now I'm pretty much in many ways just going to be doing a, a comparison, a direct comparison almost between this camera which is the Canon G9X and the Canon M50. That's just naturally because I upgraded from this to this so that's the only reason and this was my first video, video camera, my first proper video camera 
and this is my second. So, you know, I haven't got tons and tons of experience, so that's why I'm kind of comparing these two. Um, so this I've had for like ages, two and a half years, probably longer. This is what my first YouTube video was filmed on. It's been absolute class, honestly, and it's still a really, really mint camera, and I'm really grateful that I've, I've owned it. Um, so which I guess kind of begs the question in many ways, this shoots 1080p video and this shoots 1080p video. Why have I spent 500 quid when this, as a tool, does the same job? And it's all because of features. The features this camera have, has makes my job as a videographer in this sense a hell of a lot easier. So the first thing I absolutely have to mention is the flip around screen. Um, simply just for the fact, like I've been saying, it saves so much faff. So with this camera, I'd have to put it on the tripod, click record, I'd have to go in front of the camera when I'm trying to talk to the camera, um, see if my head's in shot, I'd go back, check the clip, half the time I wouldn't be in shot, so I'd have to do the whole process again. Absolute nightmare, obviously with this, I can see my head, you know, I can see that it's in shot. Um, so it saves so much time and so much effort and it makes everything run so smoothly. In all honesty, when I was vlogging or when I vlog like this, it wasn't really a massive deal that it didn't have a flip around screen. And obviously I've never had a flip around screen, so I didn't really know any different. But it didn't bother me like this because I, I knew that the, the, the lens on this camera was wide enough that it was gonna capture my head, basically. I knew my head was gonna be in shot. But yeah, for putting it on the tripod, the difference is astronomical. Huge, huge time saver. Um, and I'd have bought this camera, hindsight's a wonderful thing. I'd have bought this camera for nearly 500 quid what I paid for it just for the flip round screen if I'd have known how much of a difference it was gonna make. Absolutely unreal. Now the second thing, again, runs with this theme of you know efficiency, saving me a lot of faff, and that is this um, incredible microphone port. Um, these are obviously things that aren't exclusive to the Canon M50. I'm not trying to say that the M50 trumps all other cameras out there. I'm not really that bothered about brands and stuff, to be honest. Uh, I'm just trying to you know, explain to you the sorts of features that I wanted out of a camera um, and this was the best one for me. The mic port, or like if anything I'd say probably the biggest time saver, this should have been number one on the list. This hadn't had a mic, didn't have a mic port, so I used to have to use um, an external audio recorder with this, which is a lavalier mic or a lapel mic, obviously goes on your, your shirt or jacket, whatever you've got on. In all honesty, I'd say the video, the, sorry, the audio quality with this thing was probably better than what I have on this one now, which is the Rode um, Video Micro. I'll put a link for it in the description below. I think that's what it's called. Um, yeah, the audio quality was probably a little bit better with the with the external recorder, but it's the time and the faff that is saved um, by just having an external microphone with this. It is night and day the difference. It's so much quicker. So if you think out on location when I was using the old setup with the Canon G9X and this, I'd have to click record on this to start the video. Then I'd always have to remember to get this out of my pocket, start recording the audio. Half the time I forget to do it or I'd, or I'd think I'd press record but I hadn't. I'd have to do the whole thing again. It was, it was a nightmare. However, even more of a time saver is the post-production. Obviously then when I got you know back to my laptop to start editing my videos, I used a program called Final Cut Pro um, on my MacBook. It was a nightmare because I had to synchronize the audio between the external recorder and this. Half the time, you know, it wouldn't do it automatically. Oh my God, honestly, the time that I had to put into just doing that was ridiculous. Was now, I press record on this camera. When I'm chatting away, I know that the audio is gonna be like amazing and I don't have to do anything other than press one button. It is a huge, huge time saver, absolutely huge. And on top of that, it's really good for like, um, like ambient noises as well. So I do a lot of B-roll, you know, in, in the woods. It's nice to hear the birds chirping away or me walking past the camera or opening a gate, putting my camera on the tripod, all these different things we can actually hear the sounds, the ambient noises, it makes such a huge difference to my videography. So I'm really, really grateful for this microphone port. Another thing this camera has that this doesn't and was a reason as to why I wanted to invest in this is not as much of a bigger deal, um, but the fact that this has got interchangeable lenses. So I've only got this one lens at the minute, which is the 15 to 45 millimeter, um, and it's fine at the minute. I haven't felt a need to buy any other lenses, but it's just nice to have the option. You know, if I want, I can like get a longer lens to zoom in and improve my B-roll as a videographer, you know, on the Canon M50, or I get a wider angle lens. You know, if I want 
obviously a wider field of view for it for whatever reason. Whereas I just never would have had the option on this, you know, to change lenses. Um, so that's really nice. Perhaps the most important thing, however, um, is that this actually has a filter thread on the front of the lenses, whereas this didn't, which means that I have been able to use this absolute mammoth piece of kit. Super cheap, only like 20 quid for this off Amazon, but I won't go into details of, of why it's important. Um, but this screws on the front. Uh, basically, it gives me a lot more control of the light, which then ultimately means that I can still shoot in manual settings when I'm shooting my videos, but I only have to adjust the brightness with the variable ND filter, um, which again comes back to the, the, what this is all about. The amount of time that, that things like that save me, it makes it worth the investment. If you start realizing and thinking all these things combined, you can start, hopefully, you can start to understand how this really was a worthy purchase. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about, I've just thought actually, I probably should have mentioned this earlier on because this was a really, really big one. And that's the autofocus on this. This has got something called dual pixel autofocus, um, which I think is exclusively Canon, but again, I'll reiterate, I'm not bothered about brands um, or competing with brands. I think actually Sony, if anything, have probably got the best autofocus out there. I'm not sure and I don't really care to be honest. All I know is that the autofocus on this is mental, like unreal. And I didn't know how bad it was on this until I got this. Like, I, well, I did know it was bad on this because I never used the autofocus. I just used this in manual focus which again just took so much time and effort and energy and faff and messing about, um, manually focusing, you know, a lot of the time I'm out in the rain or the wind and it was, ugh, it just wasn't ideal, but it still got the job done. But this is a huge time saver. To be able to have a system where you trust the autofocus is massive. It's made such a big difference. If I'm, you know, chatting away like this, I just know it's locked onto my face. So if I've got it on a tripod, I know that it's locked onto me. I don't have to worry. I've tried and tested it. The autofocus is absolutely amazing. So that was another huge reason as to why I wanted to invest. And obviously this is all research that I did before I paid the money for the camera. Um, another thing, this is more of a bonus because it wasn't a massive deal. And in many ways, it wasn't a huge reason as to why I wanted to invest, but this is a crop sensor. It's got a crop sensor sensor. <laughs> so basically it's got a bigger sensor than this one. This has got a one inch sensor and this is a crop sensor which makes, um, I think this sensor would probably be like 40 to 50 times bigger. Again, like I said, like I said, um, it wasn't a huge deal as to why I wanted to invest, but in hindsight, the low light quality is a hell of a lot better. It's still not perfect on the Canon M50, but it's a hell of a lot better than what this um, was or is. And generally I film a lot in low light situations, whether it be just before sunrise, you know, dawn or dusk, or sometimes just in the pitch black. And I've noticed a huge difference with having a bigger sensor. And this one has been a real pleasant su um, surprise, but generally speaking, when you have a bigger sensor, you get better image quality, which means in, in this case, better video quality. And I didn't expect it to be that much better, but I have honestly noticed a real big difference with my video quality since moving from a one inch sensor to this crop sensor. I mean, my, my D7200, which is filming this video right now, is a crop sensor camera, and that's what I use as my main stills camera as a full-time professional landscape photographer. So, you know, this is a huge upgrade for me. Um, it's absolutely amazing. And yeah, to have that bonus of, of like better image quality is like amazing. And obviously you'll see one completely obvious, you know, advantage to this, it's tiny. Like I never even noticed this, this fits in my, used to fit in my pocket. Whereas this is, you know, a, a fair bit bigger. However, that wasn't enough to put me off, you know, all them upgrades, upgrades, um, for going for the Canon M50, you know, really do trump it being a little bit heavier in my bag um, or it not being able to fit in my pocket or whatever. Um, yeah, it was wonderful that this is smaller, but I'd much prefer to have the features on this. Um, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, I guess the moral of this is really, you know, I don't want to sit here and preach how you should approach gear, but I wanted to talk to you about my approach, um, how much love the Canon M50, um, gear is very, very personal, and like I say, I'm not trying to preach, there's no right or wrong way to view gear. All I'm saying is, you know, don't make rash decisions and, and really understand that purchasing, you know, a, a better camera doesn't make you a better photographer, it doesn't improve your skill um, in any way, shape or form, it really, really doesn't. And just look into it a little bit more, you know, we spend a lot of money on, on gear, and, and just be, be really sure 
that you can justify the purchase you know find out what you want within a camera even if it is things like features like i've spoken about today and if you think it's just uh, justified purchase the camera and i'd say you'll probably be delighted that you did um so yeah i really hope you guys have enjoyed this video please give it a like and comment below i'd love to hear your opinions what are your approaches to gear um, you know, do you hold it in a bit of a higher regard? Is it a bit more significant to you? I'd love to know your opinions. This is what photography, landscape photography and art is all about. You know, our difference in opinions and I'd love to hear from you guys. And of course, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Once this coronavirus stuff is all over, I'll be out on location taking photographs. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Out.